yeah okay i want to uh, explain this also better so, so let me actually explain this once i think there were some doubts in this also so again this is using a voltage controlled current source versus a voltage source so if you recollect we were doing this experiment wherein we took this guy uh, which had some gm with infinite output resistance and we applied a delta v step mm -hmm. and if this is v out and the capacitor is initially uncharged what was v out of 0 plus 0 right whereas when i did the same experiment with <coughs> a voltage controlled voltage source So this is with the VCVS. So here, what was V out of zero plus? He, here we told it instantaneously jumps to delta V, and I mean one simple reason is here the what we have is a VCVS, which means only the output voltage is fixed, right? Which means to maintain that voltage, this can provide any amount of current. Whereas here. Although the OTI itself has no limit as to what is the maximum current it can deliver, the current here has to be proportional to this difference, which means unless one of these voltages is an impulse, you can't have an impulsive current. So that's what limited the step jump here, right? And uh, if you think about it this way, so let us say I have a VCVS, an ideal op amp. Say it has a gain of A. This is input and output. So the voltage gain from input to the output is A. And this is across all frequencies. Okay. <coughs> now let us say I go and put a load here. Now what can you say about the voltage gain from here to there? It is still the same. It is a voltage source. It doesn't matter. Right? You go and put a giraffe there. It is still going to sustain the same voltage, which means the gain is fixed to A, and this is again across all frequencies. So, which means if this were an ideal op amp, the gain will be infinity irrespective of the output load across all frequencies. Fine. Now, let us say you do something similar with the OTA. So let us say you designed an excellent OTA which had an infinite output resistance, right? This is VI and uh, V out. What is the voltage gain from here to there? Huh? It is infinity across all frequencies once again, right? So now I do the same thing. I go and put a capacitor there at the load. Now can you comment about the voltage gain? Why? So, see, here remember what is getting fixed here by the OTA current. So, the current is definitely fixed, it does not change. But the output voltage, what does it depend on? Whatever load you are connecting, isn't it? So, now at DC, what can you say about the voltage gain? Infinity at DC again loosely speaking capacitor is open. So it's same as before. So I'll say maybe at DC the gain is infinity. But let us say move to really really large frequencies. Then what can you say? Yeah, the capacitor sort of acts like a shot again loosely speaking. So the gain drops to zero at infinite frequencies. Right. So now you see right the uh, Although to start with you had an excellent OTA which had an infinite voltage gain across all frequencies, the moment you go and use the load, the gain got off, the gain sort of got changed. And in fact, I mean this is one reason why we told we don't want to use a resistive load with the single stage OTA, right? We saw if you use a resistive load, <coughs> that load resistor was 
uh, affecting the output resistance and reducing the gain right now with a capacitor it is not affecting the gain at dc it is only affecting the high frequency gain hmm? okay now why is this relevant so if you again take a look at the vcvs case let us say this is v out and let us say for now this gain is a so v out of t what is it equal to a times the positive minus negative so a times whatever delta v u of t minus v out of t now i assume that we have an ideal op amp which means this uh, this guy is infinity across all frequencies so if this goes to infinity what can you say about the second term huh this this must tend to zero again this is true because we have negative feedback the output is finite so which means if the gain is infinite the other term has to go to zero so which means v out of t has to be exactly equal to delta v of t for all time in the sense uh, what i'm saying is v out of t follows this voltage for all time so we have the virtual ground established for all time instants and that is happening because the gain here is infinity across all frequencies okay but the moment we have this vccs the gain at what frequency is infinity yeah i mean one frequ i mean what frequency is infinity exactly only at dc it is infinity so dc gain is infinite so in steady state what can you say about this voltage in steady state that should follow the uh, whatever this voltage is so that is why only as t tends to infinity this was delta v so the virtual ground gets established as t tends to infinity but okay, let me write it here let me out of infinity is delta v but let us say i look at t equal to 0 plus now when i say t equal to 0 plus do you think i am looking at uh, low frequency or high frequencies t equal to 0 plus is an instantaneous t from 0 to 0 plus loosely speaking i am looking at like infinitely large frequency right because 0 plus is basically from 0 to a very small thing right this is 0 this is 0 plus so again uh, hand wavingly i am sort of looking at an infinite frequency so what is the gain here at infinite frequency zero so which means at zero plus this is not providing any gain so which means this will not follow this so it will retain the same voltage as before right and that is why we don't have the virtual ground getting established instantaneously only uh, as time progresses it sort of uh, works and you know the time constant here it was what was the time constant no no i mean think carefully time constant is ah uh, C, cl by gm so only with this time constant the virtual ground sort of uh, you know like follows okay. so because of the fact we have because of this vccs things don't happen instantaneously and like an ideal op amp Yeah. Mm. But again, see, uh, it's not DC means it is looking at infinite time actually. Okay. But DC by definition means you are looking for a long term, long time. So only as t tends to infinity, it is DC. How do you find DC of a signal? No, no. If you if I give you a signal x of t, how will you find the DC in the signal? I mean, that's not correct. Okay, I mean, operation. What will you do? If I give x of t to find the DC in this, what will you do? Average it, which means I'll take this guy, zero to t, and limit t tends to infinity, right? By definition, DC means you look for infinitely long time. Okay. I mean, other way to see is, okay, maybe I can do that, right? So let us say if this is V out of s in Laplace domain, what is V out of s? 
in terms of VI of S. Can you tell me? Everyone knows Laplace transform, right? Ah. Ah, I mean, the current here is what? Gm into Vi of S. So that is the current. So what is the, if that is the current, what is the voltage? This current has to flow through the capacitor. The capacitor impedance is? Huh? Okay. Yeah, okay. So here, let's say the current here I out, right? So if I write I out of T, what is it equal to? Huh? Yeah, let me quickly write GM times delta V into U of T minus V out of T. Hmm? Now you saw here, right? Here, uh, okay, or I'll say here. So now if you want this term to go to zero, if this term goes to zero, V out of T, is exactly delta V U of T. That's the ideal case. If that has to happen, what do you think should happen? This should tends to this should tend to infinity. Okay. If that, that tends to infinity, again you see the time constant. What is the time constant? Zero. So it sort of responds in uh, responds instantaneously. So it is fine. And another way to look at this now this is again versus frequency. If gm tends to infinity, what can you say about the gain? Again, loosely speaking, gain is also infinity across all frequencies. So it sort of behaves like an ideal op amp. So unless you have an infinite gm, you cannot mimic this ideal op amp. Okay. okay, so that's quite a lot about this. Let's move on. Uh, yeah, so. Exactly. I mean, that decides the time constant, right? So, it decides the speed at which the OTA is responding. If GM is large, it's going to be fast. If GM is small, it's going to be slow. Right? That's uh, that, should, that should be clear from the time constant here. Okay. So, 